There's a shared feeling floating around the community that Starlight hasn't been punished enough in proportion to her actions. That is an utterly ludicrous assessment. If someone has already realized actions were wrong and are actively choosing to do good, then what precisely would be accomplished by causing them pain? If you can answer me that with something other than justice or because I'll feel better or some other crap like that, then I might consider your opinion worth listening to. <sighs> Muzzle your dog. Your Majesty. Another day, another pack of idiots playing devil's advocate for worst pony. We haven't had a good cathartic trashing of either Starlight or the Brony community in a while, so let's make up for lost time, shall we? I'm actually kind of late to this party, but Flame Bitch and Black Pigeon Speaks here went on a tirade about how Starlight didn't need to be punished because she's actively trying to do better, a sentiment that's echoed every time I complain about her. Oh, why can't you just accept that Starlight is a better character now? The answer is pretty simple. She isn't. And here's how. I just have one question before we start. Has anyone actually screamed justice or I'll feel better as the sole reason to punish Starlight without elaborating why? No, the answer's no. Lunacorv is just too stupid to argue with things that make him angry, so he rewrites it in order to make it easier to mock. We could talk about how much of a myopic idiot this moron is some other time. The main crux of this cavalcade of stupidity is that it's pointless to punish someone if they've already realized that their actions are wrong and that Starlight is too powerful to punish regardless. Let's address the second of those two points first, because it's easiest to dismiss. There's this overriding belief that Starlight's overwhelming power means that she can't be stopped, something that I've actually lampshaded in the past. Just show someone you're too powerful to ignore and BAM, you get tons of friends. There's two problems with that, however. First of all, Starlight's power is a plot contrivance specifically made to force a redemption. Remember that in the cutie map, Starlight's magic wasn't all that powerful. Starlight even remarks on the fact that Twilight is considerably more powerful than her, and it was only in the cutie remark that she suddenly got a brute force upgrade and Twilight got a down grade. Are you telling me that in the span of a few months, Starlight suddenly became a walking nuke through study? No, this was a contrivance to force the story to go exactly where they want it to. Story structure be damned. Accepting Starlight is too powerful as an excuse is to validate lazy writing, and Starlight is only growing more and more powerful as time goes on, drawing new levels of laser blasts out of fucking nowhere, because if she wasn't, the audience would be rightfully concluding that Starlight probably ought to be just straight up killed by now. Only an idiot wouldn't notice that Starlight's power is being artificially inflated to falsify a sense of tension. Case in point. Second, do you really want to teach children to only offer friendship to somebody if they're too powerful to crush? That's pretty fucking cynical for a show about friendship. Maybe this is just me and my crazy regard for the kids watching this damn show, but perhaps we shouldn't be teaching children to treat friendship like a conniving power play. It's funny how for all the hand-waving of badly written redemption stories with, well, it's about friendship after all, in regards to Tempest and the piece of shit, when the conversation turns to cunty purple, suddenly this is all about pragmatism. And you know what? In any other show, I would find that level of cynicism appealing. In Friendship is Magic, I don't. You call for peace when it suits you, little lion. Additionally, that attitude toward friendship bumps up against the same problem as Josh's hilariously bad take regarding Newbie Dash and how hazing builds character. It only takes one person who isn't having any of your bullshit and the whole idea completely falls apart. If the victim of hazing responds to said hazing by just beating the ever-loving shit out of the asshole doing it instead of taking it with no complaint, the real motivation of a sociopath enjoying having power over others will reveal itself very quickly as the hazer starts whining about how everyone's so entitled and, well, I had to go through it, what makes you so special? I have a spine, that's what makes me special. And likewise, what happens when Twilight bumps up against someone who is too powerful to defeat and simultaneously is not interested in her friendship? So far, every character to refuse the extended hand has shown to be laughably incompetent at best. But what happens when the opposite is true? This also has the added effect of feeding into the creepy undercurrent within the entire show that forgiveness and friendship is only ever offered to the most violent sociopathic monsters on the planet and everybody else can go suck a dick. Starlight is a fascist who overreacts to everything Thing? Friendship and power. Tempest went ballistic after one bad experience? Friendship and power. Trixie annoyed a few people? Immediately stop! Great lesson to teach children, boys. What's next? That boy only hits you because he has a crush on you? Try not to dress provocatively in public? Sexual predators aren't worth dealing with? Oh wait. The other of the two big points is that Starlight is actively trying to do better, so it's pointless to punish her. And my counter-argument to that is, no she fucking isn't. She hasn't changed one goddamn bit. Quick question, what was Starlight's major problem? Nope. 
Nope. Nope. Nope. Nope. Nope. All of those were symptoms of Starlight's problem. Her actual problem was her severe overreaction to even the tiniest misfortune. Starlight as a villain was plagued by an inability to respond to bad situations with a measured response. She went right to 11 from the word go. Starlight's Biffle got his cutie mark and moved away. Starlight decided to destroy cutie marks. Starlight was stopped in the previous endeavor by Twilight. Starlight decided to erase Twilight from history. Did this behavior actually stop or change in any way? The main six is disorganized. Starlight literally fucking mind controls them. The changelings are having issues with the warmonger. Starlight sets a fucking monster on the hive. The princesses are arguing and don't understand each other. Starlight throws the entire kingdom into chaos. Starlight and Sunburst have grown apart over the years. Starlight literally fucking age regresses him. Twilight has her school shut down for being negligent. Starlight encourages her to disregard the checks on power. Discord is mocking and insulting Starlight. Starlight tries to fucking murder him. In common bond, this is remarked on by Twilight. Uh, Starlight does have a tendency to overdo. This is two years after Starlight has joined the squad as Twilight's apprentice, and Twilight has just admitted that she has learned fucking nothing. Hell, even these two jackasses reinforce the same sentiment. Starlight, honey, we know that rushing in like a train is kind of your thing, but... So when people like Luna Corva say that Starlight has recognized that her actions were wrong and is actively trying to do better, I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Now, admittedly, Starlight's inability to change has nothing to do with the fact that she's received no consequences for her actions. Starlight is not a thinking, breathing person. She's a puppet in control of the writers who have overwhelmingly decided to keep Starlight exactly where she was and act like her reckless disregard for the very concept of thinking is some kind of endearing quirk and trying to shift the focus onto Starlight controlling ponies against their will. But even then, Starlight still throws petulant and deadly tantrums when she doesn't get her way. There's something very insidious about Friendship is Magic and its recent refusal to punish people for their crimes, a feeling that is only validated when conservative mouthpieces start advocating that this is a good thing. Yeah, if you thought we weren't going to get to that, you were sorely fucking mistaken. Josh and Luna Corva are not unbiased parties when it comes to the concept of heinous crimes being punished. You can see this in the sneaky way Josh tries to sound reasonable in this shit show of a review. It's easy to say it's okay or no harm done, but words are one thing. Actions and thoughts are another. This was a sentiment echoed by Marks for Effort and applauded as a good lesson by Dr. Wolf. That what matters is that you meant well. And this seems to be the way the writers hand wave Starlight's unwillingness to change. It's apparently supposed to be different that Starlight continues to go on destructive rampages because she means well. And that feeds into the whole intent matters idea that both the show and community are pushing really hard. In reality, however, it's only your actions that are real. If your words, thoughts, and actions all contradict each other, then your actions are what you really are as a person. What you meant to do is worthless. What matters is what you did. If you didn't mean to do the bad thing you did, then fix it and stop doing it in the future. Thoughts don't matter at all. What you meant to do doesn't matter at all. If you're doing the shitty thing, then your words and thoughts have proven to be lies. It comes down to the old phrase, put up or shut up. It's very easy for people to say that they care about others or have certain values, and they may in fact believe that, but when put into a position where they have to act on it, out come the excuses. Think about the conservative Christian, a walking oxymoron who votes against free healthcare, thereby contradicting their own religion's values about healing the sick. Or the guy who declares that he cares very much about the homeless, but when asked for change on the street, he just shrugs it off and says they'd spend it on booze. Your actions overwrite your words and thoughts to showcase just how disingenuous and snake-like you really are. Of course, this is not going to slide with people who know better and have encountered this kind of cognitive dissonance in real life. Hell, we just got done dealing with this exact problem as a community, where a lot of people were insistent that they changed as people, and yet when pressured to actually change their behavior, they refused and threw a fucking conniption about it and sobbed openly about how attacked they felt. Oh look, it's the starlight glimmers of real life. This comes back to the concept of consequences and punishment because it's how we as a society put up or shut up. Starlight has only ever been rewarded for her crimes, being allowed to study under a high-ranking official and then enjoy the highest privilege and position of power. If this were the real world, others would quickly learn that trying to fuck with the very fabric of time has no downsides because even if you get caught, you'll get a sweet deal out of it. And uh, by the way, this does happen in the real world but with a very different crime. Laws are how we as a society make it clear what is and is not acceptable, and punishment is the action that makes those words and thoughts mean something. It's not acceptable to just say, I've learned my lesson and expect nothing else to come of it. Even accidental crimes like involuntary manslaughter have minimum criminal punishments, and it doesn't matter whether or not you meant to do the crime. 
It's called paying your debt to society for a reason. Unfortunately, we live in a time where radical conservatives and their disdain for personal responsibility for their actions are getting louder. And so this lesson of just saying you've changed without other people expecting anything of you and everyone who doesn't accept your half-assed apology is considered the real problem has become more popular among socially maladjusted fucksticks who would get their asses kicked if they dared step outside for more than an hour. And the brony community has always been back to the brim with those kind of people because the kindergarten level philosophy of forgiveness is everything has always been something they've wanted to apply to real life. And with Friendship is Magic pushing the kiss and make up with no actual changes theme to a quasi-political platform in recent seasons, this only emboldens the very worst of humanity to try and apply it in real life, at least until they run into a real adult who laughs at them and shoves them into a garbage can. Friendship is Magic continuing to placate those kind of troglodytes continues to be its biggest failure, and it was a failure it didn't have until Cunty Purple started stinking up the place. I hope the point is clear. Friendship is Magic is going off the idea that intention matters more than your actual actions, but that idea is bullshit. Only your actions matter. Stop talking and do. The only reason the analysis community likes this idea for Starlight is because it's an attitude they stand to benefit from. The last several community outrages have shown that if put into a position where they have to do something, they'd rather sulk and have a pity party because, I don't know if I can change. That's what one of them actually said, and these are adults. I mean, I'm told they're all adults. Last year, a bunch of people got into a truck and drove around a birthday party of a black child screaming racial slurs and threatening them with a gun. When in court for their crimes, a woman involved started crying and claiming, that is not me. But if that statement was true, she wouldn't have been on a truck screaming the N-word at children and threatening them with deadly weapons. You know the guy who became the face of the Nazis with tiki torches? When he was getting identified, he started claiming, I'm not the angry racist they see. But he went to a racist rally, and participated in it. If he wasn't the angry racist we saw, we wouldn't have seen him being an angry racist. If you leave with anything, let it be this. Deep personal feelings are fake. Ulterior motives are fake. Only your actions are real. Your actions are the only truly honest reflection of who you are. If you've claimed you've changed from your past, or that you're not the kind of person we've seen you being, prove it.